What if the Roman Empire lasted until 1922? Well, it kind of did from a certain point of view. The Ottoman Empire can be seen as a continuation of the Roman Empire. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that's ridiculous and this is clickbait and it's a bunch of crap, but just hear me out. There is a reason for seeing the Ottoman Empire in that way. First, let me give you a recap. The Roman Empire split into two parts at the end of the fourth century. There was a western half and an eastern half. The western half dissolved, and then the eastern half continued on throughout the Middle Ages. I talked about this in a previous video where the Byzantine Empire, what we call the Byzantine Empire, was at the time called the Roman Empire. I mean, back in the Middle Ages, people didn't think of the Roman Empire as something that had happened in the distant past. They thought of the Roman Empire as something that existed then in their own day. It was a contemporary thing. In Eastern Europe and the Eastern Mediterranean, they thought of the Roman Empire as what we call the Byzantine Empire. And then in Western Europe, after the year 800, they thought of the Roman Empire as what we call the Holy Roman Empire. The Eastern Roman Empire continued on up until the 1400s, when the Ottomans captured Constantinople, which was the capital of the Byzantine Empire, Eastern Roman Empire, and took it over and made it their own capital. There were a lot of people at the time who saw that as the moment in which the Eastern Roman Empire ended. But not everyone did. Now, just as an aside, I will note, there was the Empire of Trebizond, which some people have noted in the comments in my other video. Yes, that did continue on for a few more years after that. There were also some little pockets of territory that had been part of the Constantinopolitan Byzantine Empire, you know, the Byzantine Empire Center in Constantinople that had held on in various Aegean islands, for example, for a while after 1453. But for the most part, 1453 is considered the watershed moment when Byzantium ended. However, the Ottomans did not consider themselves to have ended the empire. They considered themselves to be continuing on the Roman Empire. So they took power, they took over in Constantinople, and then they continued ruling as Roman rulers, along with other titles. Now, what's the logic behind that? How could the Ottomans justify calling themselves Romans? There are a couple reasons for that. The, the main reason was geographic. The country that we call the Byzantine Empire, uh, like I said, that wasn't called the Byzantine Empire at the time. And the country that they ruled was called the country of the Romans, which is Romania in English. Now, we have a country today called Romania, and that's a source of confusion here. In Latin, it was pronounced Romania. In Greek, it was Romania. But it all meant the same thing, land of the Romans, the land where the Romans live. And when other regimes came in and took over portions of that territory, they would typically call themselves rulers of Romania or Romania. Uh, an example of this is... Uh, after the Fourth Crusade in 1204, the regime that took power in Constantinople was a Catholic regime with a new imperial dynasty that came from Western Europe. And historians today call that the Latin Empire, but at the time they called themselves Romania. Um, and again, not in the sense of the modern-day Romanians of the Balkan Peninsula, but in the sense of the land of the Romans, Romania. Uh, another example of this is when the Turks came in from the east and invaded Anatolia, um, they considered themselves as ruling Roman territory. One of these Turkish principalities was the Donish Mendids, who ruled in Cappadocia in the eastern part of the Anatolian Plateau. You can see on this coin that they call themselves rulers of the Romans. The inscription on the coin says, O Melikis Pasis Romanias Ke Anatolis Mahamatis. The king of all of Rome and here you see the word Romania, and Anatolia, Muhammad. Now, usually Islamic dynasties minted their coins with Arabic inscriptions. This coin was minted with a Greek inscription uh, because they were a new dynasty in the area and all of their subjects were Greek-speaking Christians and did not understand Arabic. Uh, another example, the most famous example from Anatolia is the Seljuks of Rum. And they're called Seljuks of Rum because Rum is the Arabic and Turkish word for Rome. You may have heard of the poet Rumi. He's called Rumi because he came from Anatolia. So his name literally means Jalaluddin the Roman. Now the Ottomans were one of these little Turkish principalities that eventually grew and expanded and took over the other ones and also took over the Byzantine Empire and took over the entire territory that had been Byzantine. So now they were ruling over 
Romania. And then, again, in the late Byzantine period, another definition of what it meant to be Roman had to do with ethnicity. The Byzantines associated the concept of Romanness with what we would call Greekness. They literally called themselves Romans, Romei. And then they called their language, which we call Greek, they called it Romanica. So then the Ottomans came in and took over and conquered the Byzantine Empire. They also called them Romans. They called the Greeks Romans. So now they have a small population of Turks ruling over a large population of Greeks. That's a simplification of early Ottoman history, but for our purposes, let's just go with that. And in Turkish, the word for them was Rum, as I already talked about. So Rum was the term for Greeks. It was the term for Orthodox Christians. So the Ottoman sultans in the early days of the Ottoman Empire, 13-1400s, were ruling over Roman people, self-identified Roman people, speaking what they called the Roman language. So it only stands to reason that they were rulers of Romans. So those are basically the two reasons why the Ottomans would see themselves as Roman rulers. They're ruling over a geographical territory called Romania, or Land of the Romans, and the people that they ruled self-identified as Romans. Now, perhaps the most obvious objection to this is that the Ottoman regime was quite different from the Byzantine regime that preceded it. It was different in terms of political ideology, uh, political legitimacy, the legal system. Uh, and, and just to play devil's advocate, I would suggest that imagine if uh, a new regime takes power in France that completely changes the political ideology of the country. Uh, perhaps it completely upends the political hierarchy. Maybe it redraws the provincial boundaries and it does away with all the old provinces and replaces it with something else, changes the calendar, you know, makes all kinds of dramatic changes in French society and political culture. Would it still be called France? Uh, you could probably guess where I'm going with this. That actually happened in France and they still called it France. The, you know, France, used to be a Catholic monarchy. And then it went through a series of revolutions and became a secular republic. The entire basis of its political legitimacy is completely different now. Its legal system is completely different now than it used to be. And I would argue that the change from Byzantine to Ottoman was no more dramatic than the change from Catholic monarchy to secular republic in France. It might seem like I'm trying to persuade you to think that the Ottomans really were a continuation of the Roman Empire. I'm not really trying to do that. I'm not trying to change your mind. Um, there were two purposes in this video. One was to give you a little bit of information about the Ottomans, how they saw themselves. And by Ottomans, I mean the ruling dynasty of the Ottoman Empire, because they really did see themselves as Roman rulers, at least back in the 13-1400s, they saw themselves that way. And I say 1300s because they actually started calling themselves Kaiser Rum before the fall of Constantinople. Uh, but also part of the reason for the video was to touch on a concept that's really important when studying history, which is to be able to distinguish between the event that happened and our interpretation of that event. So when the Ottomans took Constantinople in 1453, that's an event that happened. It's an ob it is an, it is part of objective reality. It definitely, it's a thing that happened, but was that the fall of Rome? To call it the fall of Rome is for us to project a meaning onto that event. Or to go back to 476, when Odoacer deposed Romulus Augustulus. That has often been seen as the fall of Rome, the, or at least the fall of the Western Empire. What, what actually happened was Odoacer overthrew Romulus Augustulus. That's the actual thing that happened. When we say that's the fall of Rome, that's a meaning that's coming out of our brains and, and that we're projecting onto that event. That's us as historians, as people in general, as society as a whole, creating meanings about the past. But it comes from us. So now I, my personal opinion is the Roman Empire ended in 1453 when the Ottomans took Constantinople. But I recognize that that's the meaning I'm giving to it. That's not intrinsic to the event itself. And someone can legitimately have a different perspective on that event and attribute a different meaning to it. 
will give those events certain significances, certain meanings, based on what else we have going on in terms of our, our political ideology, our cultural ideology, our cultural context and matrix that we live within, and the kinds of things we think are important versus less important. Are, you know, all those things play into how we interpret the past. A trained historian will be aware of those things, will be aware of those biases, and will recognize the difference between the object of historical event and the bias and the interpretation he brings to that event. So I think the Ottoman Empire was not a continuation of the Roman Empire. I think the Byzantine Empire ending in 1453, that's the end of the Roman Empire. But I recognize that someone else with a different set of assumptions, with a different perspective on what it means to be Roman, could come to a different conclusion and that's totally legitimate. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'd be curious if you are Greek or Turkish watching this video in the future, um, I'd be curious to hear your perspective on the Byzantines and the Ottomans being Roman. Was that ever taught to you in school um, or were you ever exposed to that concept? All right, so that's all. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.